Following a six-year whirlwind romance between Vicky and Jimmy, Jerry Rawlings was born on the 22nd of June, 1947, in Adabraka. As a child, he attended Mrs. Sam's school, where he developed a love for the arts, playing in Julius Caesar and other Shakespearean roles. He progressed to Hashimoto school, where he set eyes upon and became smitten with a certain adjutant sister. After Achimoto school, they went their separate ways. Nana Kunedu went to the University of Science and Technology. While pursuing her degree in interior design, she immersed herself in university life, making lots of friends and taking part in various activities. Jerry John, on the other hand, joined the armed forces to become an Air Force pilot. Flying was his passion, and therefore it came as no surprise when he'd won the Speedbird Trophy for outstanding performance in the flight school. The Speedbird Trophy went to Lieutenant J.J. Rawlings for being the best Air Force cadet of the flying training school. Having achieved his dream to become a pilot, he embarked on his mission to track Nana down to rekindle the flame with his childhood sweetheart. After a very long courtship, lasting almost a decade, they got married on 29th January 1977. Two years into their marriage, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, like many other Ghanaians, frustrated with their deteriorating economic and political conditions, led a mutiny against the military government at the time. Following an unsuccessful uprising, what should have been a closed military trial was open to the public in an attempt to make scapegoats of Rawlings and his men. For the first time in Ghana, a group of junior army officers had attempted to pull down a military regime made up of senior army officers. One could see that the abortive attempt had been brought about by extremely compelling factors. The trial of the coup plotters was very revealing. J.J. Rawlings, who boldly owned up as the one person centrally responsible for the attempt, gave cogent and infectiously popular reasons to explain why the attempted coup was justifiable. This titanic force, gigantic in all dimensions, broke loose on June 4th, 1979, with J.J. Rawlings coming out of condemned cells to lead yet another military regime. During the AFRC's short stay in office, they underwent a house-cleaning exercise of weeding out corruption in the system. The AFRC did its best in the short space of time to throw a searching light into the dark recesses of corruption in the country. After three months, they handed over to a civilian government under Hila Liman. Forces Revolutionary Council. 
during our short stay in power, have demonstrated openly what many people had only suspected before. Namely, that the holding of office in government in this country had in almost all cases been used to plunder the wealth of the nation. Donald is looking up to you. Thank you. The political and economic situation of Ghana did not improve, and by 31st December 1981, the Third Republic had been suspended to be replaced by the Provisional National Defense Council, led by Flight Lieutenant J.J. Bowles. Rawlings had a natural touch, a man of the people. He connected with the masses and they loved him. His style of leadership gave power to the people, that they have a right to hold government accountable. In his usual hands-on approach, JJ and the PNDC mobilized the students and professionals to join hands with the masses in rebuilding Ghana. As the people of Ghana struggled to stop the downward spiral, they joined hands with their brothers and sisters in countries like Nicaragua, Cuba, Suriname, and Burkina Faso in what came to be known as Solidarity in Struggle. As part of his visit, he received the Jose Martin Medal for World Peace on behalf of the Ghanaian people and also met with the Ghanaian students in Cuba. The chairman receives the Jose Martin Medal for World Peace from President Castro at a solemn but impressive ceremony. The award underscores Ghana's commitment to world peace and solidarity among nations, particularly those that remain oppressed and degraded by poverty exploitation and unprovoked aggression.